Okay, so I'll talk a little bit in theory, and then we'll get right hands-on. Today is video creation in one day, uh, so it only is you know about three and a half hours or so. And the big idea is, okay, point of the class to learn how to use um, consumer grade, actually we'll say prosumer grade video editing software in a more professional sense. So we will import video, we will edit video, add text, add music, export. Those are the main ideas that we will do. We'll get hands-on with all of them. But the idea is, OK, I've got some video for some purpose. And I usually, in all my classes, focus on more professional or business purposes. I teach a lot of those types of classes, making a video as a commercial for my product, or making uh, some social media videos to promote my business. I focus on that. But obviously, learning these basic concepts will apply to anything. I'm trying to put together a really fun version of my family vacation trip. OK, this stuff will still apply. I want to add music, text, etc. I'm not focusing on that. But when you, the, when you learn these things, you'll be able to apply it to per personal things. But I'm focused on the professional things. So um, how many of you uh, brought your video camera today? Trick question, because you didn't need to bring one. Uh, <laughs> I have what you need uh, to work with in the class. I have the software. We'll talk about what the software is. I have already a video file um, because you can't work with video editing without video. So let's say you, you did bring a video camera. Let's say you did bring your cell phone. Okay, how many of you also brought your cable? Okay, so you needed to also have brought the cable to plug it into your computer to copy the video out of your uh, phone onto the uh, computer to edit it. So again, no worries. I have it set up for us. So we're going to import video. We're going to edit it. We're going to rem remove mistakes. We're going to talk about, well, I said something at the end, but I should have said it at the beginning. We can talk about editing that way to move things around. Uh, we might have to put text on the screen. I might say something, but it's uh, often effective for someone to learn something uh, or for it to really stick uh, when they see it in multiple ways. Not only hear it, but see it. So we'll talk about adding text. And one of the ways to really um, make a good video that really stands out and is effective is to add some music. Maybe a soundtrack or music at the appropriate time. We'll talk about that as well. And finally, when all of those separate pieces are put together, we need to export, we need to combine all of those pieces and then upload them to our website or Facebook or whatever we're trying to do with it. Again, it's not focused on, I'm putting together the family vacation, so let me show you how to put it on a DVD to mail it to everyone. That's not the point. We're going to talk more about uh, putting it up somewhere online. So that's the big idea. So notes on hardware and then notes on software. In general, what would you say is a definition of hardware? You want to have an, an idea? What's hardware? Computers, the uh, cameras, mm -hmm. Anything else? drives, whatever, whatever you microphones. microphones. Yes, so physical things. What are the physical things you need in order to create the video? Most likely, it's just going to be my, my camera either cell phone or a regular uh, a classic kind of camera but then also the hardware of uh, the computer itself your RAM and hard drive and all of that but I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail on some of those things what I'm gonna say about hardware focused more on uh, video creation is uh, camera and microphones microphones and what's this thing that makes that was we used to use a lot more often that would make your video really steady Steadyham. tripod now if you're rich tripod so we're going to mention these items we have uh, basic level intermediate and high level if I talk about a basic level camera what might I be talking about Cell phone. Cell phone. Smartphone. 
Yeah, so uh, we have a camera perhaps with us at all times, and these now shoot such great quality video with some of the newer ones. Uh, so this is going to be basic, not in terms of quality, but I'm just going to say basic in terms of um, you might not have a lot of capabilities with it to do really advanced things, but you have a camera with you. Up on the intermediate and high levels, that's when you deal a little bit more with like a Panasonic camera. Um, up on the higher levels, you often have the Canon and Nikon and that sort of thing. So we can name a variety of types of uh, cameras here, of course, but any sort of camera uh, is going to work just fine video camera. The only thing that I will say is make sure it's HD. High definition video, this is sort of a given and nowadays if your camera shoots anything besides HD uh, it's going to look sort of high low quality. Yeah, you can just put it right there. Just put it right there. Mm -hmm. Right side of the desk. So make sure it's HD and uh, that way you're gonna have nice quality microphones people don't think about this a lot this is external mics well why, why would I care about that this thing has a microphone I can obviously talk to it and it'll record it well the thing with microphones especially those that are attached to your cell phone is their sound they're they're really good at recording sound like this right because there's meant to be used a little bit more like this and my my mouth is right here and the microphone's right here, I can record it. But I'm gonna record, you know, the CEO of the company and they're sitting down right here and I'm gonna be interviewing them and I'm gonna be over here. Well, there's already this distance between the microphone and the voice and uh, microphones that are further and further from the voice sound worse. This is when you get the noise, when you get a hiss or static sound. So external microphones, have you noticed like on uh, news broadcasts, um, they have a little microphone clipped to their shirt. That's an external microphone. That one is specifically a lapel mic, or the fancy term lavalier. How's that spelled? Lavalier microphone. One of these that clips onto your shirt. And I could still stand here, and the person I'm recording is sitting there, and they've got it clipped, and then the cable is running back to my uh, phone and it's recording the perfect audio even though I'm five feet away or 50 feet away. So lapel mic. Wireless lapel mic. Or there's also the handheld uh, mics. Those are also classic with um, news broadcasts, right? They're holding on to a microphone at this point right here and either wired or wireless is feeding the signal over to the camera. Now this is of course if we're getting more to the fancy levels, uh, but there's a variety of price points here. I forgot to mention up here price points, uh, but for microphones, lapel mics, you can start like at a $25 one, and the higher quality or wireless, the more that they're expensive. And then these handheld mics, those are also like $50 and up. You can easily pay $200 or even more for some of these microphones. So it's about how much investment do you want to do in it, and you will be able to get good results just by the cell phone itself if you plan it, uh, if you practice, if you have a tripod, because even though these things say image stabilization, these are still not as great as actually having it on a tripod that is rock solid. And they sell adapters for your cell phone that grab onto the cell phone and then screw onto the tripod or they sell these tripods that are like desk size you just put it on the desk and then it's nice and steady we could say a uh, classic tall uh, tripod or a more or we can say um, cell phone mount plus tripod or we can say compact or desktop tripod so obviously in one day we we can't discuss everything about it but here are some big ideas with just hardware and you can get good results just going straight to your cell phone and working on it but 
you have to remember the computer adage, adage um, GIGO, G-I-G-O. Anyone know what that might stand for? G-I-G-O, yes. Garbage in, garbage out. Exactly, garbage in. Yeah, just, just, just have a seat. That's fine, just, just have a seat. Garbage in, garbage out. So if you um, record something pretty badly, visually or audio-wise, you're not going to be able to really fix it when we get to the software. If the screen, if the scene was very dark and you recorded it very dark, you're going to be able to brighten it up somewhat. But then you might uh, get a lot of uh, artifacts or um, other imperfections in the video, or if the sound, if there was a bunch of traffic noise, there's no magic filter that's going to be able to remove that very well. So you want to always capture as best as possible the best result to then be able to get, you know, put a best result in to the editor, and then you'll get the best result out. If you put garbage in, you're going to get garbage out. You can't fix it to a certain point. So that's why the hardware is the starting point, step zero. What's the quality of your camera? Do you need external audio sources? Would it have been good to also use a tripod? Um, if you need those things, you know, you learn from these. If you didn't do some of these things early on, as you learn and practice, you'll see, okay, maybe I do want to spend, maybe save some money and buy some of these other things to get better quality in, to get better quality out. Um, before we go to software, does that make sense? Any questions? Any further thing to kind of talk about the hardware, the, the physical things regarding recording the video? Well, I would still add in the, the Steadicam type of the device because the price keeps dropping mm -hmm. and you can go on YouTube and make your own. Steadicam would be great if you need a lot of uh, motion. If you're going to be following a subject and you need it to be steady at the same time, I think that might be a little, little bit of overkill if we're doing talking head type of videos. You just put it on a tripod and you're done. And the price point, yeah, they keep getting cheaper and cheaper. I bought one years ago and it was pretty expensive and now I see it like half the price or less. But yeah, there's lots of uh, little bit, bits of hardware that could also be useful um, to set yourself up. Yeah. Lighting, okay, that's a good one. Let's put that one in there. Um, so obviously if I'm going to record myself right now, it's going to come out great. Uh, no, not really. I usually, <laughs> I usually turn off that light right there so that it doesn't glare on your screen here. So I could turn on more light to record myself even better, or um, I could go near the window. Now it's overcast today, so that's not a great I example. But being re recorded by a window, natural light, that's nice. Or there's the whole aspect of buying actual lights, buying real lights, not just your desk lamp, which, you know, what's the color calibration of that, and all of this other ex uh, fancy stuff. But lighting, this is a real, real uh, secret trick. More light, more good. If you want your visual medium to be visibly good, part of it is the lighting of things. Now, maybe you're doing a fun style in film noir or something. Okay, sure. But still, most of the time we're going to deal with products or people being recorded that we want with a nice good amount of lighting. And so we have all of these types of lighting, you know, studio lights, uh, basically dedicated lights and there's such a huge range of prices there with uh, reflectors and a lot of complexity a little too much that we can get into at the moment but if you've got a good amount of light on your subjects that helps a lot about a green screen or a key yeah. light screen green screen, green screen. Uh, if possibly if people need that so that's a possibility there green screen So to remove the background of your subject. So this is um, something that a person stands in front of or your product is in front of and using the software we can then remove the background and put that subject into some other type of scene or background. Okay so software. Um, this is our video editing software. You might need also photo editing software. So you have 
What's that? Sound editing. Uh, you could do the sound editing as well. So sound editing, but it's related also. It's part of the video editor. So we have basic, we have intermediate, we have advanced. Basic is going to be like iMovie. And for a long time, okay, iMovie for, for the Mac. And for a long time, we had uh, Windows Movie Maker for Windows, but they just discontinued it recently. And that's the one I used to teach in these classes, but in the last year, they discontinued it, so you can't really download it anymore. The latest Windows 10 has a very basic video editor. I think it's too basic, but there's a built-in video editor into Windows 10. And there's this basic tier of uh, software. The price on that is usually free. And it can do several things. It can do the text. It can do the music, etc. But at a certain point, you run into a limitation of what it can do. So we go to these higher levels. For example, let me jump to advanced. We have Final Cut Pro. We have Adobe Premiere. Get the extra E on Premiere. Uh, I always do, yes. Uh, so some other advanced software. What else is there that's big and famous? Um, there's other ones. And this one usually is in the price point of not affordable. But it's advanced. It's powerful. It lets you do really advanced things, which I think for a lot of us is too much. Price-wise, feature-wise. In the middle, one example. These, of course, are many examples. Elements. There's the sort of big professional version. And then there's like the junior version, like Photoshop. Photoshop is the big famous software that's been around, around for decades. It's big and powerful, complicated. But then there's Adobe Photoshop Elements. A, light, a slightly more streamlined consumer version or amateur version with a lot of bells and whistles. And same thing with Premiere. You can go to the big, expensive, powerful route, but what we're going to focus on in this class is Premiere Elements. Price-wise, I've seen it from about $79 and up, usually $99, one-time fee, whereas Something like Premiere, full Premiere nowadays is part of the Adobe suite, which is nowadays part of a monthly subscription. And for a variety of prices, regular price, student version, and all of that, but just as a price point, $39.99 a month. If you're a student, okay, you can get it for $19 a month or something, but still, it's more of a subscription that you pay as much as you want, as long as you want. As for the Elements version, it's a one-time fee, regular price $99, but I see it for sale at $79 all the time, at Fry's, at uh, Costco, on their website. And I myself, who teach this stuff, but I also do this for clients, and I'll show some examples a little later, um, I... Uh, years ago, years ago, started to learn this stuff on, on Movie Maker, and then I've also worked with iMovie, and then I've, I've gone up, and I've dabbled a little bit on Premiere, but I mostly use Elements. It does what I need it to do, even for clients, um, and I personally want to get better at full Premiere, but you know, you never find the time to do everything. And I've been able to create some, some good stuff for myself and for clients uh, with elements. And that's the one we're going to focus on today. You can create similar things in iMovie and Movie Maker or the new Windows 10 one. But again, these are the ones that are more powerful. More complicated, yes. But they give you more ability. And there's a bunch of other ones like uh, Sony Vegas and so forth. But there's a lot of uh, software out there. Uh, for video editing. Does that make sense? Any questions on the general concept here of software? Yeah. Uh, quickly, uh, the people who, let's say, like uh, the, the TV reporters, you know, the cameramen, when they record their video, 
that sort of thing. I, maybe that's a little bit above some of this, but do they use Final Cut Pro or do they use Adobe Premiere? Do you, does anyone know? It, um, it depends on what they're using it for. Um, if it's like for news, they use sort of different software because that's a little bit more for live consumption. Um, but yeah, Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro and such, those are like the big ones for big movies and such. Those are also used. There's also Avid and other things. So, so they made movies with cut Final Cut Pro, um, like little yeah. movies or something? Yeah, full full length movies too. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. So we're going to learn like a version of uh, Premiere, Premiere Elements. And once you get these sorts of ideas of how it works, uh, you can continue using that version or further educate yourself up to the big leagues, but definitely it is more uh, more complicated. Okay, so what we're going to do hands-on, it's not just theory, we're actually going to do this stuff. Uh, as I said earlier up here, we're actually going to do these things, import video and so forth. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, how many of you brought a, uh, a USB flash drive today? If you brought a USB flash drive, we're gonna uh, save. You can save your work and take it with you. If you didn't bring one, um, you might be able to email it to yourself or upload it to Google Drive or something. But um, I want. If you did bring a drive, you can plug it in. And if you didn't, that's okay. We'll we'll still go along with this. I have a video for you that I recorded that is in need of a little bit of editing and it needs some music and it needs some text. So you didn't have to come with any sort of video. If you did, you need to plug in your camera with your cable, I don't have any of that for you, into the computer and copy it to your computer. If you don't know how to do that, again, don't worry about it. I have the video for you. So the video is going to be found over here. If you double click the, um, if you double click computer at the top left, let's all do this, double click computer. And again, at any time, if you, um, if you need a little help, uh, raise your hand, call me over, or uh, our assistant here, Haciel, he'll also help if you're having any trouble. You can also help each other, but if you do so, please do it at a reasonable volume so you don't distract your neighbors or me. So inside of this computer window, let's go to network location, classroom data drive Z. Z is in Zebra. Double click classroom data Z. There's a bunch of folders of a bunch of instructors. If you scroll down, there's a folder called Campus Video. Basically, you're going to copy that whole folder to your desktop. So when you see the Campus Video, drag it or copy it to your desktop. Or if you brought a flash drive, copy it to your flash drive. You will not be able to edit the video in my folder. It's locked only for me. So copy that at least to your desktop, preferably if you brought a flash drive to your flash drive so you can continue to, to open it and keep the file even after the class. So that's step one. Copy that folder to your desktop. That folder has a video clip. I'll play it briefly. Now, these computers don't have sound, and that's on purpose, because if you were playing your favorite soundtrack, then someone else plays theirs, then you can't hear yours, so you raise the volume, then they can't hear theirs, so they raise the volume, and then we have a sound war going on. So these computers don't have sound. If you brought headphones, that would be useful. If you didn't, that's okay. You'll still be able to work with this and edit the video and so forth, and you'll be able to hear mine at, ver at the very least. So as a little preview about this video, I'm just gonna play it for a moment. Hello and welcome to the Tech Review Tuesday. I'm Victor. This is the show where I review something cool every Tuesday. This week what I've got for you is the Motorola. Okay, so this is a quick like two minute video. We're gonna edit it, maybe brighten up the colors or fix the colors or fix the sound. Now my projector doesn't, uh, doesn't do it justice, so it is a little dark on the projector anyway. But I wanna go in also and maybe like at the beginning here, I don't start talking until about hello and welcome two to seconds so I might want to remove a little bit at the beginning and then I know I flubbed things up here and there I want to remove that I want to put a nice soundtrack to make it enticing I want to put text 
maybe some sort of intro graphic, etc. That's the whole purpose of this video editing, to take this raw footage and do something more with it. What kind of footage you have or what you do with it, that's going to vary, obviously, depending on, on your needs. But let's say I'm a tech blogger. Let's say I have a website, uh, victorstechtips.com. Um, and I'm trying to get readers, I'm trying to get sponsorships or whatever. And so I'm going to create video. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all of these social networks nowadays, they have a video component. So I'm going to say here, thinking about this, modern marketing or advertising for your business could, and I should say probably should, include some video content. It's not just enough that you have great photos or can write compelling things. Video is becoming more and more popular that people learn something from a video. People keep up to date with news or tips or advice through video. And in all of the social networks, they let you do some form of video. So if we know how to create slightly more professional video than our competitors, that might give you a leg up from the competition. So the idea here is I'm creating a video series where in about a minute or two, I review a product. And I upload it to my YouTube every week, or to my Facebook, or whatever. But I want to jazz it up a little bit, especially remove the mistakes and maybe add music and branding and so forth. Then that's what we'll cover. Let's go to the Start menu over here and start to search for the software Premiere. Now, on these computers, we do have both versions of Premiere, the full, powerful version that we will not cover, which is Premiere Pro CC 2018, and the more consumer-friendly Adobe Premiere Elements 14. That's the one we want. So as you start searching for Premiere over here, you should see Adobe Premiere Elements. That's the one you want to start. Uh, close it and start it again. For some reason, um, you know these computers are in need of a of an update. Now I kind of noticed that. Sometimes my computer is a little bit different than your computer. So if things are very different, tell me, of course. What I'm seeing at the moment here is it pops up. This is Premiere Elements. Would you like to edit photos, organize your stuff, or edit video? Do you see this little kind of pop up too? OK, if you see that as well, click the video editor. If you, if you, if you had Adobe Photoshop Elements, then clicking here would take you to Elements. And then the organizer is, is their junior version of Bridge just to organize stuff. But we want to focus on the editor. So click on Video Editor. And that'll start up in a moment. That's going to start up in just a moment. One of the things about video editing, it is, a, uh, it is an intensive process for your computer. Your computer, the newer that it is, the more RAM that it has, the newer CPU, etc., the better. Uh, back when I was first experimenting with video editing in the late 90s, some of these processes would take hours to combine all of the pieces into the final video, I would leave it running for hours, sometimes overnight, uh, because this is taxing and complex on your computer. So the newer computer that you have, the more modern specs, the better. I then get this main screen here, where we have uh, eLive Quick Guided Expert. One of the things I like about Premiere Elements is that it kind of gives you a lot of tutorials and help on learning these concepts. Obviously, we won't be able to cover all of these concepts in class, but I want to learn how to do something like this. I want to put imagery or video inside of a shape. 
we're not going to get to that. But there is a link there to go read how to do that. Um, how do I, you know, do these sorts of side-by-side -side things? How do I do picture-in-picture? -picture? So you can read all of this on your own later on. Let's switch over to expert. I'm going to dub you all experts, so click on that. At the top, we're going to go to the expert view where we have less of a hand holding. But once we kind of get the basic ideas, we will uh, we'll see that it's that it's doable. In general, I have this area down here, the timeline with various tracks. So to make notes here, interface. timeline at the bottom which is rows of tracks a track can have a video file or audio file or text or music it's it's like layers so if you've used something like Photoshop there's this concept here also of layers. If you haven't used that type of software, layers is like different sheets of paper, where in Photoshop, I have two sheets of paper. I have one layer that has one person, and I put that layer on top of another layer with a background, and they're both separate. I can edit this layer, and it won't affect this layer. Uh, Elements, video, uh, Premiere, is pretty much the same. I can have one video on one layer and I can have another video on another layer and do some composites or most often I have one one video layer and then on top of it I have my text layer So when its own layer text is happening and it's not affecting the original or I can have a background music I can have the background music in a layer behind it so I've got the video on top and then other music happening behind it so I have these tracks I have these layers we'll say they are independent I don't have spell check on this, so forgive me. They are independent, and they don't affect each other. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. So the, the big idea is in the interface at the bottom, we have here audio one, track, voice, music, now, my screen's a little different than yours. Yours probably shows everything at once, something like that. But my screen's a little different. Don't worry about it. But mine's, mine's a smaller screen here. So we have these various tracks. I can put all of these videos stacked on top of each other. Or most likely, I'm going to have my main video playing here. And on this next layer or track, I'm going to have the text. And then below it, maybe I'm going to narrate something or I'm going to put music. So it's just this concept of separate elements in their own layer. Modern video editors, like the one we're going to use, modern video editors are non-destructive. They don't alter your original footage. Back in the old days, if you didn't have a copy of your original video and you started to change it, it changed the original. So you were stuck. You had to. There's no way. There was no way to get back the original footage. Now this file that I that I gave you here will always be the original one minute thirty nine seconds, no matter if we cut it down to ten seconds for an Instagram video. So that's really cool. It's non destructive. In this main area, we don't have anything meaningful just yet, but here's going to be the main preview area where you will see your video. going to say preview area where all the pieces of your video are shown. And when I talk about pieces, well, we can have text and multiple text. We have icons up here. We can have picture in picture. All of that is visible in the preview area. We have other tabs and such. We'll get to those things. Well, in order for us to do anything, we need we need content like our video. Now, here's the part that, for some reason, this is going to be very different on your computer. 
for like half of the, the, the stations there, so this will be a little odd. We need to um, add the video that, that, I, um, that I gave you. And let's try it this way. If you, if you have, at the top left, you have Add Media and Project Assets. Let's open this Project Assets tab right up here. I know we have Add Media, which makes sense, but let's do it this way. Project Assets. This is going to be a little screen that is going to store all of the pieces of your video. The video itself, the audio, the text, etc. What I would like you to do then is to drag and drop the, the video from your desktop folder, just drag it and drop it into this project assets panel. And for some of you, it'll do it right away. And for some of you, you will get another screen that says something about import or something. Um, if that happens, tell me so I want to see what that looks like. Some of you will say, would you like to run the media import or something? Like that? Like, anyone see something different than me? I just dropped it in and it did it. It's there. Anyone have something else? Usually half the class has something different. Maybe they updated the software. OK, well, if you managed to ingest your video, that's the fancy term to say, I put the video into the project. I put the video into the project. I'm going to save my project. File, save as. And wherever you have your folder that you copied, mine is on the desktop, you need to go to your folder. We're about to save our project. You can call it whatever you want. It's a .prel file, Premiere Elements. And I'm saving it in the folder that I gave you, Campus Video, preferably on your, hard, on your flash drive but I'm putting mine on the desktop and I'll save. So confirm that you imported or ingested your video into your Adobe Premiere Elements, and then you've saved it into the same folder where the video is. Now you have that editing file and your original video. So, we've got a video in the project assets folder here. This is where it would show all of the pieces of your project. So, project assets, where all your pieces of your video exist. If you don't have an item in that project assets, it's not part of your project you have to make sure it's in here so that you can work with it. What I will do then is from the assets I'm gonna drag it onto video track one. Right, We have video and audio track one. Just drag it from assets down over here. See when you drag it over do I want to put it here or do I want to put it here? Put it all the way to the left. The video starts at the left. If you drop it down here my video is going to have 30 seconds of blank and then it's going to start at 32 so make sure when you drag it and drop it drop it right at the left so it starts at 0 seconds you may see a message about a solid background just click no on that so 
I've dragged it from assets to the timeline, video and audio track one. There's a little green dot that says, yes, you are using this asset in your video. Before it did not have that little green dot because it was like you have not used it yet anywhere in your project. That's just something to note right there when you have a lot of pieces in your project. I am using this piece in my project. Now, this video is about a minute and a half long. And you see this, you see this uh, time code up here, zero seconds, etc., etc., down to here. In my case, it looks like this, kind of small. Yours is probably stretched out more. We have a zoom button on the right side over here. When you click this, you zoom in to see more details of the, of the video. So if I zoom out this far, I can see it all in the totality of it or zoom in. Sometimes we need to zoom in because as you zoom in, then you're going to see these. What do these little mountains represent? Audio. Audio. So I said something here. I caught my breath here. I said something more. I stopped talking. I said something more. So we can zoom in to the point that we're seeing, you know, word by word. So if I said the wrong word, I can zoom in and cut it out. So we'll talk about how to do that, of course. But you want to get used to the concept of zooming in and zooming out. And you want to get used to the concept of using the keyboard. I'm doing the zoom in and zoom out by magic. I'm not using the mouse. I'm using the keyboard. We have various keyboard shortcuts, and you will often get a preview about what's a keyboard shortcut when you hover over it. So the minus key on the keyboard zooms me out up on the number row at the top. And the, pl or the plus or the equals, because this tells me right here on the equals key, I can zoom in. Now obviously, you're used to the mouse, but when you get into this more complex software, knowing as many keyboard shortcuts as possible will really help you speed things up. Because I will say, keyboard shortcuts help your workflow. Question? So when you're copying the file into Premiere Elements, the entire file is copied in? So it's not linked in any way to the original file? It's actually copied. The original file is still in place, but a copy of it goes into memory. It's not really making another copy of the file. You still only have one copy of the original MP4. It's just that Premiere is paying attention to it in memory. So again, more memory, more CPU, the better it can handle it. So there's only one file always, but there's a copy of it sort of in memory. If I disconnect the file by saving it someplace else? If you move the file. To, so, so in other words, do I have to carry my assets with the Premiere file? Yes. So if I move this video out of this folder, Premiere loses track of it. This file, the Premiere file, um, assumes that you know we imported it from here, so there it is. So you want to move the whole folder in its totality from drive to drive and such. You can easily relink it. If you did move it from this folder to another, when I go back to Premiere, it says this file is missing. Pr please relink it, and it'll pop up to, uh, for you to pick the path to where you moved it to. So we'll say here, always keep your assets together in a folder. So you don't break the links between Adobe Premiere and the files. On the keyboard shortcuts, hover over. Question there, guys? Question? You guys have a question? No? Okay. Hover over your um, icons to get keyboard shortcuts. Hover. There you go. Hover. Hover over your icons to get keyboard shortcuts. They really speed things up because I've been doing this for years. First for fun and then for clients. This part of the process takes a while. 
we might have like a three hour <laughs> video shoot with a client and it would easily then to the editing process right here oftentimes be at least double that amount of editing I, I recorded three hours of video well that's gonna be maybe six hours of work six hours of editing because I have to play the video I have to replay the video I have to go in and remove the mistake add the text do it again I like this better even with a plan this stuff takes forever the editing portion of things in Hollywood movies are often shot like in a month or less and then they take like two or three months to edit before they're released classically the Star Wars movies you know they were shot in one year and then they would take two years of editing special effects and editing and music and everything and then it'd be released um, so this is why keyboard shortcuts could be very helpful simply well what's the quick way to cut and paste and what's the quick way to zoom in and out and it doesn't take a long time that yeah I'm gonna move my mouse over here and click zoom in two times okay got it whoops let me move over here and zoom out that doesn't take too much time but all those little things add up <laughs> And when your mouse is already on the keyboard, your hand is already on the mouse, and your other hand is already on the keyboard, one hand is doing one thing, and then another hand is doing another. I'm zooming in, I'm zooming out, I'm doing selection, I'm zooming in, and all of that. It really helps to be um, in a faster workflow that way, knowing keyboard shortcuts. And I'll point them out as necessary. One, for example, is if you press the space bar, it starts to play your video. Hello and welcome to the Tech Review Tuesday. Which is the same as if I press this play button right here. And you're going to do this a lot. You're going to play a video clip, you're going to rewind it, play it again, and do you notice as we play, actually I'm going to mute it, notice I'm as we play, this, this play is the show where I review something along, cool and it says I'm currently at 10 seconds. This week what I've got for you is the Motorola G5. If I want to edit something at 20 seconds, I can drag this over here until we get to 20 and it's in fractions of a second. So the playhead, it's at 20 seconds. If you have the volume up, it does also play your, your voice fast forward and all of that or rewinding it. But the point here is I can move it around to the right place. Because the point is, there's approximately two seconds right here. There's some amount of time that is empty before I start talking. One of the big things people want to know early on is how do I remove this stuff, this empty, you know, the silence or it's blank and so forth. In my case, it looks like it's almost exactly three seconds, 2.24. Um, seconds so I might want to remove this and we'll talk about nuances and such but do you see wherever you have your playhead the red line there's a little scissors to cut so watch this I'm gonna click right here I've now split this clip into two separate pieces and then I can select that one and delete it so now my video starts exactly from my voice hello and welcome to the tech room actually I cut it too much I did that on purpose but the point here is, hello and welcome to the tech. I can easily cut things out. Let's let's try this together. If you move your your playhead somewhere there, and this is the part when the volume does help, so you can actually hear it. But let's just say if we go to 223, we will we will then click the the scissor icon here to split the clip. the one clip has become two clips Do you see it, it starts here and it ends here the preview down at the timeline only shows you a preview of where it starts and ends it doesn't show you frame by frame so I can see here that I've split the clip I've got one clip two clip and if you click one time to select the left clip it highlights or that one highlights and when you click the left click and right click you have uh, delete now I'm just showing the two the two possibilities but the idea is again we have a lot of right click or we have icons or we have the keyboard 
delete on the keyboard. Because there were technically two types of delete there. If we delete, it leaves the empty space, which I might not want. If we do delete and close gap, OK, it deletes it and closes it. Or on the keyboard, delete does the delete and close gap. Yes? Is there a keyboard shortcut to return to the, the beginning? Yes, on the keyboard, if you press the home button, it takes you back. See, my timeline has moved back to the home. And I'll note some of these in a moment. But this keyboard navigation is going to be very useful. So I'll note them in a moment. Let me show a few here. You can move frame by frame with the arrow keys. So you can jump you know, fraction of a second by fraction of a second, left arrow, right arrow. I'll write these in a moment. You can jump all the way to the beginning of the clips with the home button. If I want to jump all the way to the end, we've got the end key. We can jump from split to split with page up and page down. So we'll say here keyboard navigation. Left, right arrow. Move left or right frame by frame. Actually, first we had spacebar, play or pause the movie, preview. Um, home or end key, jump to home to start or end of movie project, page up, page down, jump to next or previous clip. Wherever I've cut one clip, if my playhead is here, I press page down, it jumps to the next one. If my page, if my playhead is here, I click page up, it jumps to the beginning. If my playhead is over here, page up, We'll jump to right here, and page down, we'll jump to the very end, where the, left, where the end of the clip is at. How do you undo a cut? Control Z, like a lot of other software. Control Z, undo anything. So if you split it, if you cut it at the wrong place, Control Z to bring it back. This is where, again, you have these shortcuts. We have a big old button, undo. But I'm going to have to move my mouse all the way down here to click it. Control Z. We have also redo, and that one has control shift Z to redo it. I went back too far. Redo it, control shift Z, or you press the button. And then we've also got another use fun zoom in, zoom out. So we have minus key versus the equals key, zoom out or zoom in. Delete key, delete and close gap. Well, all of that is to say I want to remove the silence at the beginning of the video. And the thing is to not rely only on the, on the, on the appearance of the audio. So you will see the audio. And it looks like, yeah, I want to start it right here. I want to clip it right here. I don't start to talk. Video is audio and visual aspect. So I'm if I delete that part, my video starts with my mouth half open, looking weird. I don't want it there. I want it with my mouth closed and then to start to talk. So teaching the technical aspects about click this to do that, that's easy. Teaching the theory of editing video, that's a lot harder to do. Because technically deleting deleting everything starting at, you know, 222 or maybe 223 seems like the correct thing to do. But perhaps a little bit further back. We all have an opinion. They're all right. They're all wrong. The right opinion is mine. So 200. Zero, zero. But anyone you want to pick, yes. Whenever you go anywhere here, what you think is the best hardware. Actually, my mouth does still look a little weird. Let's do here. Also, you're looking away from the screen. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Any, any choices? It's going to be a good one as long as you know what you're doing and want to accomplish what you're doing. Hey, I just realized it's the same shirt. Yep. <laughs> <So>. <laughs>
So, uh, yeah, 2018, look at that. Okay, so the, um, I think that might be a good spot to, spot to start the clip at. You can pick whichever one you want. So I'm going to split it right there and then delete it right there. And then when I play it, Hello and welcome to the tech. There's a little bit of a pause, which is nice. That's, again, editing is its own job. It's its own credit in a movie. There's the director, there's the actor, there's the uh, cinematographer, there's the, uh, there's the editor. They give Academy Awards for editing, which is doing this, removing mistakes, adding the sequence of things. It's its own art and science. And some auteurs can do it all. They record it. Um, they edit it, they score it, but usually in a big Hollywood movie, someone's got their own job to do. And so it's, it's a thing that can be taught on a technical level, but on an artistic level, there's no wrong answer here about exactly where do I start it. Maybe I want to start it at, you know, 206 or whatever that was, or maybe I just don't like it at all, let's reshoot it. So if you have that luxury, that, that's that, something you can do as well. And I'm going to say I'll start it approximately there. zero dollars it's all a volunteer effort let's edit something also there's a big old gap over here I think Horizon and more. now for some reason when I show this on these computers at a certain point the audio and the video gets unsynchronized don't worry about it that's the problem of our that's the fault of our computers but as I play it here my voice doesn't match with my with my face, just don't worry about it more. But there's this part right here where I'm trying to figure out what else do I say about this thing? This would be perfect to this remove. So this is another example where I need to split. Now at the very beginning, at approximately two seconds, it made sense, let's make a, let's make a split, select and delete the previous. Here, the idea is a little different. I need to split it right here where I stop talking, split it right here where I start talking, and then delete the middle, maybe even right here. So as best as you can, because we don't have the, the audio. And again, mine is unsynchronized, so don't worry about it. But somewhere around here, in my case, 1 minute, 0 seconds, 30 milliseconds, uh, 30 frames, Approximately there, I'll split it. And then approximately over here somewhere. I should be also paying attention to the video, but again, just for the idea of it, I've split one clip into three pieces. Where I was talking up to this point, split. Where I start to talk again, split. And in the middle is the blank part that I don't need, which I can right click, close gap, or simply press delete on the keyboard. Click it once to select it, and then right click it, or delete on the keyboard. So now, technically, it jumps from one speaking part to one speaking part. And on screen it looks like this. And more. This phone is... So... If you kind of have a keen eye, you see that I'm holding the, the phone in a certain way, and then magically it's another way. Now, this again, when you start to edit this stuff, you will see that sometimes things don't line up. That's the nature of it, because unless you've got a lot of practice or a lot of footage to match it up together, those things will happen. And I'm not saying it's a mistake or anything like that, but people will say, well, how do I fix it? Why is it suddenly flipped around? Well, that has to, the only way really to fix that is to figure out where do I split it as I watch the video. You know, at a certain point I flip it over. So maybe I actually want to clip it here where I actually flip it over so that then when I'm over here it's not so awkward that suddenly I've got it flipped over. This is again the, the, sci uh, the art of it. This is an art and a science. The science is simply click the button, clip it. The, si the, the art of it is like where do I do it? Now there is a part here like that, that it flips this over. This still is highly jump. recommended because it Do you need to worry about that? Do I need to match it frame by frame? Probably not. You don't have to obsess with every one of those details. Because you see all of those details, 
you look at this over and over. This, this video is one minute long. I've already spent 10 minutes editing it, and I still have more to go. You see it over and over and over. But a person's going to see it and go through it, and they're not going to notice those little things. They're there for the content, the personality, the information, the sound, etc. Something like a quick little hiccup like that. It happens this so fast, who cares? Because it has They're all enjoying the their, your video, need, hopefully. Uh, not obsessing over the details. So let's take our first break here. Um, I introduced this concept that you can split your clips as necessary. You can go to a clip, you can click the scissors that separates the clips, and then you can delete the part not necessary. That's the first concept over here after importing. Edit a video. So basically here, drag and drop your video or audio, etc. into Premiere. Click to split a clip and delete the unnecessary stuff. We'll practice a little bit more right after the break, and we'll talk about text, music, etc. It's 10.45. We'll take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 10.55.